Today we'll be looking at multiplying polynomials, uh, several different objectives here, and we'll work through each of those. Starting with just multiplying terms together, so looking at something uh, like our first example here, the negative 4a cubed times the 3a to the fifth. Uh, really just multiplying the negative 4 and the 3 together gives me negative 12. And the a to the third and the a to the fifth, we multiply those together, but when we do that, we actually add the exponents, so we end up with a to the eighth power. So just negative 12 a to the eighth for that. Looking at the second example, we have the 2 and the 8 to multiply together, so that will give us 16. We have m squared and m cubed, so we add the 2 and 3, we get m to the 5th. And then we also have z to the 4th and z squared, so we add the 4 and 2 together, we get z to the 6th. Here we'll take a look at using the distributive property in order to find a couple products, and I'll also show you um, uh, some different methods here. An example A, looking at just multiplying the negative 2 through. So remember we have to multiply by the 8x cubed and by the 9x squared. So the little arrows there can help you remember to do that. Um, of course multiplying the negative 2 by the 8x cubed gives us negative 16x cubed. And then the two negatives cancel out so we actually get plus 18x squared. So that's what that one looks like. For uh, this next example, the 5x squared has to multiply the negative 4x squared, the 3x, and the 2. So we have to multiply it by all three of those. Um, multiplying uh, by each of those by the 5x squared, again, the arrows can kind of help just to remind you to multiply each of those. So I get negative 20 x to the fourth, and that's four there because I'm adding the twos together, although, uh, of course, multiplying the twos would work as well, but again, really adding. And then we're going to be adding uh, 15 because of the five times the three, and then x cubed because of the two plus the one, minus, because of the negative, minus two there, and then five times two is ten, so ten x squared. So that's what we're looking at there. Now looking at C here, not only do we have, uh, or we have more than just the single term multiplying here, we've got the two terms, the 3x minus the 4, so that's all together. You can use just the regular distributive property in order to um, find this product. I recommend though using what I would call the box. In order to do that, I set up a box with dimensions that match uh, my two polynomials. So in this case, it's a binomial times a binomial. So I set up a two by two box. So where the the length and width of it are each two, and then on one side I put one polynomial, and on the other side I put the other. So I've got the 3x minus 4 on one side, the 2x squared plus x on the other. And I always use the left and the top. Um, I suppose you could do you know, either the bottom or the right instead, but uh, just always do it this way. And you don't necessarily have to, but I typically put the first uh, polynomial on the left, second one on the top. Um, and again, you could change that up. It does not actually make a difference there. Then we look at what we get inside the box. So uh, in this cell here, in this top left cell, we multiply the 3x by the 2x squared. So 3 times 2 gives us 6, and then x times x squared gives us x cubed. Uh, in the top right cell, we multiply the 3x by the x, so we get 3x squared. In the bottom left cell, we multiply negative 4 by 2x squared, so we get negative 8x squared. In the bottom right, we just multiply the negative 4 by the x, so we get negative 4x. So now we have really uh, four different cells. So we've got top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. Top right, bottom left, those happen to be like terms. So we would write this. Uh, after combining like terms in descending order power. So 6x cubed. I've got a positive 3x squared, but I'm subtracting 8x squared or adding a negative 8x squared. 
So I have minus 5x squared and then minus 4x. So that's what I end up with for that product. And again, the box, just a way to help organize that so you make sure you don't forget uh, what you're kind of handling there so you don't miss any pieces. For example, D, the next one here, again, big difference there is that we also have this 2x squared out here. So it's like having an A times a B times a C. We just need to choose which one we want to multiply together first. I would probably uh, just multiply the 2x squared through the x plus 1. So that would give me 2x cubed plus 2x squared, and then that would multiply by the x minus 3. I would still set up a 2 by 2 box for that. So setting that up, and then uh, again the 2x cubed plus the 2x squared would go on one side, the x minus 3 would go on the other. Inside the box, finding my products, 2x cubed times x would be 2x to the fourth, minus 6x cubed, uh, 2x squared times x would be 2x cubed, and then minus 6x squared. Now in most cases we do get like terms in the top right, bottom left. It does not always happen that way but it does again in this case. Highest degree term we have though is 2x to the fourth. We have a minus 6x cubed and a plus 2x cubed, so that's a minus 4x cubed, and then a minus 6x squared. So I highly recommend uh, adopting this box method for multiplying polynomials together. One of the great things about that is uh, when it is a binomial times another binomial, you can just set up a two by two box if you have a trinomial or something else, you can just change the dimensions of the box to fit the situation. So for these two products, uh, for A, I would set up a 2x2 two two box. Notice the 5A minus 2B on this side, and then the 3A plus B across the top. So again, I just need to find my four products inside, uh, and then if there's any like terms, combine them. Uh, so let's see, inside here we'd have a 15A squared, a 5AB, uh, and you could go 5BA there, uh, AB seems to make sense to me. Negative 6AB, so those will be like terms and get combined. And then a negative 2B squared. So starting off, uh, and really each of these terms is really a second degree term, so I, I don't necessarily have a descending order of powers because they're all second degree. But this is the order I would put them in, 15a squared minus ab minus 2b squared. Now I'd set up a 3 by 2 or a 2 by 3 box for b because we've got a trinomial here for the 3m cubed minus 2m squared plus 4. Personally, I like to just set it up kind of short and wide, so too tall, 3 wide for me. Uh, 3m times 3m cubed, we get a 9m to the fourth. Uh, and then we get a negative 6m cubed and a 12m on top. So three cells on top, three in bottom. We get a negative 15m cubed. Notice we've got a couple of m cubed terms. We have a 10m squared, and then a minus 20. Uh, again, we'd combine like terms, and we'd write this in descending order of power. So the 9m to the fourth would be first, minus 21m cubed, um, then we get a 10m squared, so plus 10m squared. Uh, and I'm running out of room here. Minus, or sorry, plus the 12m and minus the 20. And so that's how we would write out that uh, product. Uh, most textbooks are going to mention the FOIL method. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of FOIL. It just stands for first, outside, inside, and last. Just to remind you when you're multiplying a binomial times a binomial to find all four products. Uh, again, the thing with that is that FOIL applies only to multiplying two binomials. Okay, Whereas, like I showed you with the box, we can just uh, change the dimensions there and... Uh, then the box applies to whatever we need to, a trinomial times a binomial, or whatever that might be. Um, if you really like FOIL, you know, feel free to continue to use it. Um, I will generally use the box, plus then people can kind of see 
uh, what's going on with those. So I'll go ahead and set these up to be boxed. So looking at this first one, the 4m minus 5 times the 3m plus 1. And like I mentioned earlier, I generally just get into the habit of the, the first binomial goes on the left, second one goes on the top. And again, if it's different dimensions, I might change that up a little bit depending on how I want to draw that out. For my top left, I see that that's a product of 12m squared. I get a 4m, negative 15m, notice the like terms again, and then a minus 5. Starting with my highest degree, I have 12m squared. I get minus 11m and minus 5 for that one. Again, also, once you've done a lot of these, you might be able to just look at that and figure it out, which is perfectly fine as well. But again, remember the main goal is to get them correct, not to do them quickly. In the second example, of course, we do have A's and B's here. Um, again, doesn't change our approach at all. We just take whatever we're given. So 18A squared, 24AB, negative 15AB, and negative 20B squared. Uh, similar to earlier, each of these is really a second degree term, uh, so the order does not necessarily matter, but I just start with the 18A squared plus the 9AB from combining the negative 15 and the 24, and then minus the 20B squared, like that. And for this third one here, really setting it up the same way, a nice 2x2 two two box. So we get uh, in the top left a 10k squared, uh, and then a negative 6kz, a 15kz, and a negative 9z squared. Again, these are all actually second degree, but I'll start with a 10k squared uh, plus 9kz minus 9z squared. So again, combining the kz's there, 15 minus 6 gives us 9. Otherwise, uh, again, just kind of writing up those three terms for that. Here we look at one of our special patterns. Uh, so the sum and difference of two terms. So we can see here uh, the x plus y times x minus y. And what we get when we multiply those out, we get an x squared a minus xy, a plus xy, and a minus y squared. And again, especially if you draw a box out for that, you can see those terms. We've got our like terms in the middle. They are opposites, though, so they completely cancel each other out. So it's really just x squared minus y squared. So if we look at the pattern x plus y times x minus y, we get x squared minus the y squared. So a very handy pattern for quickly uh, finding the product of sum and difference of two terms. So here we've got some examples of sum and difference of two terms. So notice p plus 7, p minus 7. So all I need to do here to figure this out is I will have a p squared minus 7 squared, which would be 49. Uh, that's all there is to it. We would have a 7p and a minus 7p if we were to uh, box that out, uh, but those would cancel. So I can very quickly look at that and see that that's going to be p squared minus 49 just following that pattern. For something like example B, the 2R plus 5 and 2R minus 5, uh, again, if I square 2R, I actually get 4R squared, and then minus 5 squared, which would be 25. Again, if you actually box that out, you'd have a 10R and a minus 10R. Of course, those would cancel out, so you're left with the 4R squared minus the 25. For example C, we do get a couple different variables, M and N. Again, doesn't really change our approach at all. Uh, I would just multiply or square the 6m, I get 36m squared minus, and then square the 5n, I get 25n squared. Uh, the terms that would cancel out if you box that would be a 30mn and a negative 30mn. Now in example D, we include a 2x cubed out here, so I would focus on uh, using the pattern on the x plus 3x minus 3, and then multiply that result by the 2x cubed. So if I just leave my 2x cubed here, x plus 3 times x minus 3, well I'd square the x and get x squared, and then minus 3 squared, which is 9. So now I just distribute the 2x cubed through, I get 2x to the fifth, minus 
18x cubed. So just an extra step in there because not only did we have that sum of difference of uh, two terms, uh, we also had the 2x cubed on the outside. Uh, next we're looking at the square of a binomial pattern. So this is a very special or important pattern really uh, because so many people look at squaring an x plus a y and they want to just distribute the squaring through and get uh, that x plus y squared is x squared plus y squared. That is not generally the case, so we can't just say that that's how it is every single time. However, if you at least have those two pieces figured out, the x squared and the y squared, that's two of the three pieces. The third is just that we find the product of x, y, and we double it. So you really have this pattern pretty well figured out if you just know that you will square the x, you will square the y, but that's not all. You also find the product of this twice. And again, drawing a box for that is a good way to see how we get the x squared, the y squared, and we get an xy uh, in two of the boxes, so we combine that to be a 2xy. Again, if I use the pattern, I can pretty quickly uh, square something like an m plus 7. So I square the first term, and I get m squared. Then I take the product of the two terms, which would be 7m, and I double that, so that would be 14m. And then I square the second term, the 7, and I get 49. So again, fairly quick way to find that. Um, of course, it does take some getting used to with the pattern, but again, all it is is squaring the first term, uh, multiplying the two terms together and doubling it, and then squaring the second term. So for example, here on B, I just square the P and get P squared. Now this will be minus because of the minus, that's P minus 5. I multiply the two together, get 5p, but then I double it, I get 10p. And then the third one's always plus, so plus the 25 from squaring the 5. And again, that's always plus because even though you're squaring p minus 5, uh, you'd be multiplying negative 5 by negative 5 to get a positive 25. Now with the third one, 2p plus 3v squared, again, we do get a bit more to handle there because we have two different variables pattern is still the same. I would square the first term, so 4p squared, plus, and then I multiply the two together, 6pv, and then double that, so 12pv. And then I would, uh, for the third term, I would square the 3v and get 9v squared. Uh, again, take some getting used to to get there. If you need to for a while, you could just multiply 2p plus 3v by 2p plus 3v. Uh, and again, I would recommend boxing that out. You'll see how you'll get a 4p squared on the top left, 9v squared on the bottom right, and then 6v in the top right and in the bottom left, and that's how we add those together to get the 12pv. And then the th uh, fourth one here, the 3r minus 5s squared. Again, using my pattern, I just square the 3r, I get 9r squared. This will be minus. If I multiply the two together, I get 15rs, so I double that, I get 30rs. Oops. Try that again, 30rs. And then again, this last one's always plus, so 25s squared. Uh, so 9r squared minus 30rs plus the 25r squared, or s squared. Um, so again, very handy pattern. Again, the problem people run into is thinking that it will just end up being uh, that if we square x plus y, we just get x squared plus y squared. The key there is that exponents do not actually distribute over, multiple, or over addition or subtraction. Exponents do, however, distribute over multiplication and division. All right, so now we're looking at the same type of thing but multiplying using uh, functions rather than just the polynomials together. So if I have the function f of x and that's 3x plus 4, and g of x is 2x squared plus x, they want me to find f times g of x and f times g of negative 1. Well, if they want f times g of x, let's go ahead and figure that out first. And again, that's really just f of x times g of x. So here we do actually get to multiply these together. I'm just multiplying 3x plus 4 by 2x squared plus x. Again, so I could set up a box for that. So I have my 3x plus 4 on the left and 2x squared plus x on the top. So I get a 6x cubed in the top left, 3x squared in the top right, and 8x squared in the bottom left. Notice again those are some like terms there, and then a 4x here. So that's my f times g of x. 
Again, I'll combine some like terms there. 6x cubed plus 11x squared plus 4x. Uh, now they do want me to find f times g of negative 1. Well, I've got my function there. So f times g of negative 1. I would just plug negative 1 in for the x. Uh, let's see, I might need a little more room there than what I have. So 6 times the negative 1 cubed plus 11 times the negative 1 squared plus 4 times the negative 1. So I go through and evaluate my different pieces. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Uh, negative 1 squared is 1, so 11 times 1, or just 11. And then 4 times negative 1, of course, is negative 4. So really you have negative 6 plus 11 minus 4. Uh, the negative 6 and negative 4 would be a negative 10, plus the 11 would be 1. So f times g of negative 1 is 1. Uh, so again, a bit of work to, to find, but it's still just focusing on finding the product and then putting the negative 1 into that new function, f times g. So just in case you didn't believe me earlier, how I said that x plus y squared does not necessarily equal x squared plus y squared. We have some uh, exercises for you to try. Specifically plugging in a 3 for x and a 4 for y. You can see how these different statements uh, are not necessarily equal to each other. That x plus y squared does not equal x squared plus y squared. Um, and so again you can take a look at that. So I would recommend trying that on your own for first. Um, and then if you want to see what that looks like when I do that you can uh, watch that as well. So. Here I go, the first one plugging in the 3 and 4, so 3 plus 4 squared, well that would be 7 squared and that would be 49. Now if I do that with the x squared plus y squared, I would do 3 squared plus 4 squared, which would be 9 plus 16, and I actually get 25. So again, you can see there that the 49 does not equal 25. Uh, and the same thing is going to happen for uh, the other ones, how you're going to see that uh, those things are not the same. Again, that's a very common error, so hopefully doing the rest of these questions can help you see uh, that we can't just distribute the exponent over uh, addition or subtraction. Uh, thanks for watching, and hopefully it helped.